Okay. So yeah, this is a presentation about like a like a cross layer communication, or uh, I call it like multi layer depths because it sounds like better and newer. But yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's just about the uh, cross chain uh, or cross layer communication, I guess, because not really change. It's all based on like what's possible on Ethereum. So multiple layers on Ethereum, uh, which makes it easier to do. So yeah, first some some yeah normal stuff so everybody knows like what's going on. Um, so yeah, why do we even need like multiple chains or like multiple layers or like multiple L2s, multiple L3s? It's because yeah, single layer doesn't scale enough. Uh, and so we want to just use more or more so we can scale more and we can parallelize more stuff, uh, state things, uh, also like execution of transactions, uh, those kind of things. So we try to break it up, but also we try to then make it look not so broken up for users, or at least that's the goal. So they like yeah, they can still see like that they are on like a single chain or like at least they are not like confronted with like uh, delays and like uh, like a different UIs or whatever. Um, so for users, hopefully things can look as uniform as possible so they can still have like this Ethereum experience where yeah, they can just interact with whatever, whatever depth they want. They don't have to worry about like yeah, which chain they're on, like which layer they're on, that kind of like stuff. Um, so yeah, the basics. So how do we normally do these kind of like uh, cross communication things is, um, well, yeah, one way is to use storage proofs. Uh, and the storage proof is just like a Merkle proof where we can verify um, that some data is stored somewhere uh, on, on, a, on a chain. Um, so if you write some, like in the smart contract, if you write something in the smart contract, then eventually it's end up in the storage route. Um, of the chain you're working on. Uh, and then you can use a Merkle proof to verify that something was written on that chain um, using that state route. Uh, so you can trustlessly check if what you wrote there in the past is correct. Uh, and you can also like verify that on chain. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like expensive. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of like a benefit of like L2s, L3s is that as long as all the chains have access to the, the L1 block hash or the L1 state route, uh, they can just access whatever chain data they want. Because if you are a layer on Ethereum, then somewhere you, yeah, well, normally somewhere you store like the state route. Uh, and so as long as you store it on Ethereum, you can you, you can access it using an, a Merkle proof. Um, so this is not the case if you're trying to use like actual like cross chain um, communication, because like, yeah, if you want to access uh, Solana or whatever, then somehow you have to have like the, the state route of Solana uh, accessible to Ethereum. Uh, and that means that there needs to be some kind of like light client on Ethereum if you want to do a trustless or there's like a multi-sig or some kind of like other mechanism to bring that uh, state route over to Ethereum so smart contract can access. So yeah, this is kind of like an old, well, it's an old outdated uh, block header of Ethereum, uh, but it's good enough for our purposes. So you can see here that uh, the per, per block Kind of like what data is stored for Ethereum, uh, and for us, uh, like the most important part is like the, the state root here. Um, so yeah, we have like state root, uh, which is a Merkle tree, and then inside this uh, main Merkle root uh, Merkle tree, we have like the accounts, and then each account has like another Merkle tree inside of it for like storage. So if you write something in a smart contract, then it's end up in the in the storage root of the Ethereum account of that smart contract. Uh, and this is kind of like just for L1. Uh, and if you want to do L1 plus L2, then you just like, uh, like yeah, you just uh, high, like the, the, the tree just gets higher and higher uh, the more layers you use. So uh, like, yeah, like I explained, so in the Ethereum account state, um, it's kind of like the L2 rollup smart contract on Ethereum. And then in the storage route of that smart contract, you store the L2 state route uh, at some point. And then like, uh, because we are like a uh, Tyco, like for example, Tyco, like we're fully equivalent. So basically just copy paste whatever is uh, on top of it. And yeah, you get the, the, the same mechanism. And so yeah, more layers, uh, the higher the, the Merkle tree you're actually creating. So you just uh, stack them on top of each other. So yeah, so a bit more information about the, the Merkle tree that Ethereum uses. So it's a, a Merkle Prisha tree. Um, so it uses, it's not, it's not a great tree, but it's the one we got. So uh, we have to support it. Uh, so it has like four, oh yeah, just some, some quick information. So it has like four different uh, node types. So extension branch account storage. So account kind of like makes sense. Accounts are stored there at storage. It's for like a, just like storage, uh, like a stuff you write in a smart contract. Uh, and then you also have like extensions and, and branch nodes. 
Um, so normally in a normal Merkle tree, you only have like branch nodes uh, with contains like all the children and you just like yeah, progressively uh, build up the tree. Ethereum also likes extension nodes because they try to like optimize the number of branches. Um, so if a branch only has like one child, uh, you can just make it like an extension node and then you can just like, yeah, skip the branch node just by, um, um, yeah, posting all the shared nibbles it's called uh, in like this, this extension node. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like different rules. Uh, all this data is also like RLP encoded. The 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 way this data is hashed to so each node also needs to be hashed because the the node the the child node needs to be stored in the parent node. Uh, so we use like k check is used for that. Uh, it also uses like sixteen children instead of like just a normal binary tree, uh, which just uses like two children. Um, the the height of the tree is two hundred fifty six levels. Uh, because if you access uh, an account, for example, then the first thing you do is hash the address of twenty bytes. You get thirty two bytes. Then these thirty two bytes are converted in sixty four nibbles, so two nibbles per byte. And then you yeah you go over this tree that you see on the on the right side. So potentially there's two hundred fifty six levels, but yeah because of extension nodes, the number of levels could be like yeah, significantly lower if yeah, the branch would only contain like one child. Um, so yeah, RLP encoding, also different rules for like encoding the keys that need to be stored in the trees. So um, like yeah, all, all set together, it's a quite complex uh, tree. It's also like very expensive to prove in ZK because yeah, we have to do the RLP encoding, all the data is hashed by KCHAC up to like 256 levels per access. And that's that's only for like, yeah, one account level. Then there's also like a storage level. So in total, if you want to verify that some data is stored in the state tree, it's actually like a twice that amount uh, in the worst case. So yeah, not great, but uh, yeah, normally it's kind of like more, more reasonable. So okay, that's kind of like some, some background information about the, how the things look in like detail or like at least high level detail. Um, so yeah, normal case, if you want to deploy like an L2 on L1, uh, it kind of like looks like this. So we have like just like a smart contract on L1 for the uh, for the L2 you're creating. So yeah, you just deploy it on L1. Uh, normally uh, that's also something inside the, the bridge. So you just deposit stuff to that L2 uh, roll up con smart contract on L1. And yeah, that's basically it. So then they are kind of like, yeah, if you want to deposit, you deposit to the L1 smart contract and then the L1, L2 can pick it up somehow. Uh, and the normal way of doing it now is yeah, using those stage uh, storage proofs that we just talked about. Um, so that's easy to do if we can just uh, give each layer access to the others, um, like a block hash or state root. So the L2, as long as the L2 has access to the uh, Ethereum's uh, state route, we can just check if something happened on L1. Uh, and the same is true for L1. So as long as the L1 has access to the L2 state route, we can use the local proof to check if something happened on, on the L2. Um, so yeah, so we have like a couple smart contracts, uh, bridge, uh, one bridge per L2 here. And uh, so that's kind of like the normal case. Then if you want to use like multiple L2s, then like, yeah, we, we, if we use the the naive approach, uh, we just deploy more of these like uh, L2 uh, roll up small contracts on L1 uh, and each would be like its own bridge. Uh, and so, yeah, you just like duplicate the work. Uh, so three times in this image and yeah, so, so each bridge contains like its own assets for this L2. So um, if you want to, um, yeah, all the other assets are stored per L2 smart contract, uh, L2's uh, roll up smart contract on L1. And so, for example, if you want to move from one L2 to an other L2, you actually have to go through the L1 because the assets actually need to move from like a one bridge to the other bridge. Um, so that's not only like yeah, pretty expensive, uh, but also like inefficient because if you want to check now that um, like yeah, yeah, you have to use like this L1 transfer of the actual tokens. Um, so uh, not great for like yeah, moving just between L2s. Uh, without uh, going through the L1. Um, so yeah, so you would say like this, this, this kind of like uh, fragments the, the liquidity between the L2s. Um, so I guess that's kind of like the first thing we'll try to solve here is just to have like one unified bridge. Um, and so if you just have like multiple L2s using the same bridge, then these L2 can like, like a, you can do token transfers between the L2s without going through the L1. And um, because no matter 
where you actually want to exit your um, your funds on the L2, it all goes through the same bridge. So you just have to prove that you own some assets on some L2, uh, and those tokens will always be available on the on the on the shared bridge. Um, so that means that you don't have to go through L1, uh, and so it's uh, more efficient to do it like that. Um, but yeah, you still. Yeah, you don't have to go to L1, uh, but there's still like this asynchronous behavior because yeah, you can just go from L2 to L2, but these L2 still need to use storage proofs to access, like yeah, to 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 prove that they actually kind of like burned some tokens on one L2 and they kind of like want to melt, uh, mint L2 tokens to the other L2. Uh, so yeah, because they have to do that, they still have to have access to the other L2 state route and they still have to generate a, a Merkle proof to do it. Uh, and to be able to get the state route, the the L2 also has to be like uh, completely verified and proven on chain uh, because we can't just use like any state route. It actually has to be like ZK proven or optimistically proven or whatever. And uh, so we have to be yeah, we have to ac have access to like an L uh, the state route that we can actually trust. Um, so yeah, it's better, but still still not uh, the ideal uh, way of doing things. Uh, so yeah, so how can we actually make it like synchronous? Uh, a synchronous com communication between like L2s. Uh, well, yeah, we we can we can bring in some kind of like a bus system. Uh, so on each L2, there would be like a, a bus smart contract, uh, and this smart con uh, this bus smart contract, we would add like a validity rule to the L2 that says that this bus smart contract needs to contain the same state. Uh, the, the the same storage route on each of those L2s. So that means that if you, for example, yeah, we want to mint some, like yeah, you want to bring some tokens from one L2 to the other, then you kind of like write this to the bus smart contract. And then on the other L2, which does not actually do that, you would still have to put in the same data. So this data is synchronized between all the L2s at the same time. Um, so that means that, again, okay, if you can enforce this, then that means that you can just do like atomic uh, communication between all the L2s. Uh, but yeah, there's like a big downside is that, yeah, we do have like this extra validity rule and uh, that says that this bus smart contract needs to have like the same storage on, on all L2s. Does that, so that means that, yeah, to be able to verify that you actually have to execute all L2s. And then after the execution of all those L2s, you check if the storage route is correct. Uh, and so essentially, you're not really scaling the chain because you still have to run nodes for all the chains um, to be able to verify that. And so the the only reasonable uh, solution to that is just to have like the ZK proofs. So for each L2, you would have like a, a zero knowledge proof that the the state was yeah the, the state was updated correctly. Uh, and then if you are only running a node for one L2, you can easily and quickly verify that the other L2s actually also follow this validity rule because the ZK proof is there. Um, and so that way it's actually still scalable because L, each L2 can actually be proven separately uh, and the validity rules are still like easy to check because the only thing you have to do for the other L2s is just check these. Uh, this this uh, very efficient to to verify like the zero knowledge proof. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like the ideal case. Uh, but yeah, zero knowledge proving uh, change still takes like quite a while. And so there's also like some optimistic approaches to be able to like yeah, enforce that these uh, bus state routes are actually uh, the same across all the L2s. Um, this also kind of like um, forces you to use like something like a shared sequencer. Uh, although the, this design is called, uh, I think it's called like a shared availability uh, system, but yeah. To be able to use the system, all these L2 blocks also kind of like need to be made at the same time, or at least like proposed uh, at the same time, because yeah, um, because they have to like force that these um, bus smart contracts uh, are the same. Also, yeah, to be able to do that, you might have to introduce extra transactions on the other L2 uh, to to get there. Um, but yeah, so knowing these kind of like extra considerations or extra downsides is also like, like obviously the the big upside is that like yeah you can do whatever you want across l2s uh atomically uh there's like no wait times there's like no um miracle proofs that users have to like generate to be able to prove something that happened on another l2 no this kind of like uh, automatically um automatically and also atomically uh you can just do whatever you want uh, so it doesn't really matter anymore on which l2 you are on 
but there's still like some some downsides and so the l2 to l2 communication is great um but still you there's still no like easy way to uh, access the like l1 data um so yeah uh you also have to sometimes do that uh, and so this would still require like manually uh created like uh Merkle proofs uh and they would still like yeah be be expensive to verify uh expenses to verify in smart contracts and also like inconvenient because you have to create like the a correct Merkle proof for the uh for the latest uh, state that you want to access so that's where the 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 own uh own shilling comes in uh with like the l1 call and the l1 delicate call uh so yeah this kind of like fixes that so uh if we add some pre-compiles to uh, the L2 that allows us to execute code on the L1 by injecting that code inside the L2 directly, um, then we can just avoid doing the manual uh, Merkle proof storage uh, proof uh, generation. So um, yeah, that does mean that, yeah, you're not doing it manually, but yeah, somebody still has to generate these Merkle proof because internally we will still verify the Merkle proof against some kind of like, uh, like the L1 state route. And so the so the idea is that the node uh, will do that for you because the node can okay also is also running an L two no, uh, an L one node and so the L two node can just go to the L one node get the data it needs and do the correct execution of that uh, pre compile. Um, so yeah, we have L one call. So L one call would just do whatever. Uh, so it would execute the same code and also use the. The, the actual storage from L1. And then there's also like L1 delicate call that just uses the store uh, the the code stored on L1, and it would actually store the data on L2. Um, so you can kind of like um, be flexible on that on what you're actually trying to do. Are you actually trying to verify that something would work on on it on L1, or you have to have access to something that's stored on L1? You use L1 call. Uh, if you just want to execute some program that's stored on L1, you would use L1 delicate call because L1 uh, L1 delicate call allows you to still store data on L2. Uh, and this would be for each L2 separately. Uh, so you have like uh, inherent parallelization uh, if you do it like that. Um, so yeah, so how would this kind of like look in practice? Uh, I just wrote some some pseudocode because, uh, well, this will definitely not work, but at least uh, it's something uh, you could actually look at and kind of like understand hopefully like how it would work in practice. Uh, so you have like this this bus smart contract where which allows you to write some data, um, like on L two. So uh, easy, you write something. So yeah, if you want to, for example, transfer some tokens to another uh, chain, then you would just write that you want to transfer this amount of tokens to some kind of like chain ID, uh, and then like yeah, you also have to be able to read it on the other chain. So then you can uh, yeah, you just call a read, and then this data is encoded somewhere, uh, some somehow. Uh, doesn't really matter how. So this is kind of like then the main uh, token smart contract. Uh, so it's like very, very uh, simplified. It just stores the, the total balance uh, because the total balance is, is kind of like a, is, is a shared state. So if you want to read the total balance, that's only available on the L1. Um, and like the actual balances will be stored on the L2. So uh, transfers can happen in, in parallel. Um, so yeah, total balance uh, kind of like a, like a shared state function, you could uh, call it, and then transfer, X transfer and X mint is what would happen on each L2 or, or could happen on each L2 uh, in parallel. Uh, so transfer, um, yeah, is exactly what you expect. Just transfer uh, some funds from one user to another uh, on the same L2. Um, so this is, is important. So this would happen on a single L2 uh, completely. Uh, and then you also have like X transfer, which would actually transfer some funds to uh, another L2. Uh, and so you would just like still subtract the amount, uh, but then uh, because yeah, the, the user still loses the funds on this chain, uh, but then you would use the, the bus to actually write that on this chain, you burn some uh, like yeah, amount tokens on, on this chain. And then you also write it on, on which chain, like which L2 these tokens can then be minted again. Um, so you just write, uh, you can do like X transfer from the, the current chain to the two chain ID uh, chain. And uh, so you just write it to the bus and then all the other L2, you can just then use uh, the X mint, uh, which will read from the bus that like, yeah, this, this burn actually happened using X transfer. Uh, and then you could get the, the funds back on the, yeah, the target chain. 
Um, so yeah, this still requires like two trans uh, two transactions. So one to like yeah, one on the original chain, and then the other trans uh, transaction that does the XMAN on the other chain. Um, but yeah, for users, this would look like yeah, this could look like like just one one single transaction or like one one operation because like yeah, all these transactions uh, can be done atomically. So the user actually doesn't have to know that that these things uh, are done in the background. Um, and then yeah, yeah, there's also like this this function is parallel, and that just says like okay, yeah, um, is this function like parallelized or not parallelized? So like yeah, in this case, all these uh, transfer x transfer x mints are like parallelized because they have to happen separately or they can happen uh, independently on each L two, and then total balance will say that not parallelized because total balance we just want to read the total balance. Um, so yeah, this smart contract you would deploy on L one uh, once. And then this, like, yeah, then we have like what smart contract we would deploy on L2. Um, so yeah, this is just like a simple, slightly modified like uh, proxy contract. Um, so the first thing, like, yeah, you would just deploy like yeah, this proxy smart contract on L2. You would point to okay, yeah, this this is a proxy smart contract on an L1 smart contract. Uh, and then the only thing you kind of like have to do in this proxy is just for whatever function comes in. Mm -hmm. Uh, you check if the function is kind of like parallelizable. Uh, is it if it's parallelizable, you do um, a delet call. So we keep this state on this L2. If it's not parallelizable, then we just do L1 call because that means we actually have want to also use the state stored on L1. Um, so this this would be like the total balance uh, would go through this path, but the the transfers would happen uh, through through this path. Um, so yeah, delet call would actually store the data that's modified here in this proxy smart contract this l1 call yeah um again whatever state changes would happen in this l1 call would just be thrown away because we can't modify the l1 state directly and so yeah this uh, gets us to some uh oh yeah so with the bus with like the the l1 call l1 delicate call kind of like brings us to like this tycho singularity which is just a made-up name because people like the names but it does allow you to write like yeah, just deploy like once on l1 uh just like this one like yeah, multi-layer depth whatever you want to call it uh and then on l each l2 that you want to like yeah, add extra parallelization to it you just deploy on l2 this easy proxy smart contract which will never have to change because all the important data is actually stored on that one or like the the program itself is stored on the on the l1 um so yeah need more parallelization just add an extra l2 uh, and things will just work out uh, there's nothing else you have to do uh, so yeah easy like yeah, efficient communication with the l1 also efficient communication between the l2s atomically uh, um, and yeah i guess a nice system that would actually uh, work well, hopefully, and uh, I guess like hopefully creates like a nice environment for users and also like a, an efficient way to like a, parallelize what actually can be parallelized per application specific. Uh, and also this does away with like bridges that all have to store like all the funds for a rollup. Um, in this case, the funds uh, like a, the 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 bridge is actually the smart contract itself or the 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 DAP itself. Um, so there's no like risk to have like one bridge when when it's broken, all funds will be lost. No, now it, the security kind of like depends on the app per app basis. So if like one token is hacked or or something like that, then it's kind of like um, yeah, it, it's kind of like limited to like just one one smart contract. It doesn't mean like totally like all funds stored on the on the rollup are are insecure. Um, so that's like a, an another benefit of of doing things like this. Okay, that's uh, that's it. Thank you so much. It was like uh, really cool. I have a question. Um, going back to this uh, Tycho singularity uh, approach, uh, does it need any uh, agreement between uh, all L twos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, yeah, because you would have to. Like yeah, it only kind of like makes sense if you just have like this combined uh, system uh, where you also have like this shared sequencer. Uh, because yeah, if you want to use especially, but if you don't use like the bus mechanism, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you want to use like the bus mechanism, 
uh, then like yeah, you need this shared sequencer and so L2s would have to opt in to like yeah, using this same shared sequencer and also reusing in this case like the bridge but yeah I guess then it's kind of like it depends on like what each depth decides on like how they want to allow bridging. Okay but if we take a set of uh, L2s that already use a shared sequencer what are the steps for them uh, to have this uh, cross-chain thing? Uh, so yeah, I guess the 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 biggest uh, if they, they they don't want like atomically ex uh, uh, atomic like transaction ex uh, inclusion uh, the or like execution then not much. So they don't have to do anything. Um, but yeah, if they want to do that, then yeah, they kind of like opt into this like shared validity. Um, mechanism so yeah they would have to be okay with that because that means that like yeah, this, this there is like an extra validity rule added for that rollup that says that that state would for the bus smart contract uh, needs to be the same so they have to be okay with that um to be able to opt into the system but yeah the the other like yeah l2 this this system yeah doesn't depend on that so it's kind of like each l2 can decide to do this or not uh, it doesn't really matter but if they already have uh, atomic transaction in Kisson? Do they already? Uh, I think at this point, none do. The espresso doesn't, doesn't do it? Uh, espresso is just like a shared sequencer. Uh, so they don't have like uh, atomic, uh, like not guaranteed, well, uh, unless you use some of the the, the workarounds using like a, I think like the proponents like a bank system uh, but that adds like extra capital requirements to it and well it's not not ideal um so yeah but yeah espresso is just like shared sequencer and um, this is kind of like yeah what they call like shared validity because yeah the validity of your rollup also depends on the validity of other rollups and um, because the state route needs to match between them with the shared sequencer you don't have like this extra validity rule Okay, I see, I see. Uh, that, that's very interesting, thank you. Uh, does anyone have questions to Brecht? I, I have one. Um, can you guys hear me? My mic on my computer sometimes doesn't really work. Yeah, we can. Hey, cool. Yeah, so uh, if this actually comes to fruition and actually used and all that kind of stuff, what sort of dApps do you actually see <laughs> utilizing this? Like, obviously, my first thing is like, you know, uh, uh, an NFT marketplace where it doesn't matter where your NFT yeah. is, 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 is a bigger yeah. one for me. There's been a lot of talk in the community lately about bridging entire collections, and it's kind of a headache. Um, you, uh, you know, some of the bigger collections like De Gods moved from Solana to Ethereum. They moved their other collection, which is Utes. They moved it from uh, Solana to Polygon, and now they're moving it to Ethereum. Uh, obviously, some get left behind every time when this happens. It spreads the collection around. I know Layer Zero has a concept of like an ONFT, which is basically it can be on any chain at once. Um, it's it's somewhat similar to this kind of idea but i think there's you know there, there's value in having all your collection in one spot and then there's also value i think a different type of value in having your collection be scattered all over uh which on whatever chain the user is most comfortable with and selling it to a user who is not comfortable on that chain that you are and is, is uh which to me that's kind of the first thing that jumps out at me is 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 selling assets without having people having to learn new things Okay, there was a, a lot, like, was there like a specific, like, yeah, what application uh, you would use this for? Yeah, I guess like, yeah, NFTs and like tokens would be the, the ideal case. Uh, but yeah, if, it, if you actually want to use this for like cross, like yeah, the actual different chains, uh, then things do get like more complicated because then like, yeah, you have to use like light client things for, or you either have to run a node or you have to do like light clients things on like uh, one of the chains to, to be able to do it well. Uh, but yeah, if you just use like, yeah, um, just want to use like uh, the tokens on all the L2s, then yeah, you just yeah store every, all the data on, on the L1. And then you have like contracts on L2 that just point to the data on L1. So you don't have to like copy things around. Uh, you just copy, you just have to store the, the L2 balances uh, on the different L2s uh, and all the rest is just, yeah, stored in single place. Gotcha. And uh... You know, obviously there's a lot of games coming out lately. I think someone just deployed uh, this Omni Kingdoms game on like Tycho, uh, Scroll, and otherwise. 
So clearly this game could be played by, you know, if you're a, if you're a maxi on one chain or whatever, you could play this game hypothetically using this system um, on your chain and play against someone on a different chain and still battle or, or trade items or something. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Although, like, yeah, if you if the the the, the communication between the L twos is like each time, then oh, no, just... that would be like a not like a yeah. I guess that wouldn't work that well because then it's kind of like not parallelizable. Um, but yeah, if if you can do lots like within the L two, and then you sometimes just have to like do communication with another L two, then that makes the most sense. Any other questions? Okay, uh, then what? I have. Okay, okay, oh. please go. You go ahead, Lisa, if you'd like. No, my question is is worse than yours. Please go. Mm -hmm. We don't know that, but uh, thanks, Brecht. Is really nice. Is I'm just like the um, the 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 reasons not to to go for the singularity way i'm just curious what people are um like what the other side is is the main disadvantage is having to run an l1 node at the very least and then l2 nodes for the ones that like opt into this system but is it kind of assumed um yeah like l2 node runners might already be running l1 nodes especially yeah. in like a based roll up situation so for you know then if for yeah. if for each for each L two you have to run a one node. There's no there's no way around it uh, unless you want to trust somebody else uh, for like the Ethereum data that you want. So um, you could. Right. Then, well, yeah, you you have to the data is posted on Ethereum, so you have to run the nodes to be able to access the data without trusting somebody else. So the the L one node, yeah, you have to run, uh, and then like yeah, for like the the L two. Well, yeah, if you run L two node, you <laughs> you run L two node, and so if you want to check the validity of the other L twos. Uh, then yeah, it would be bad if you also have to run an L2 node for all those um, other L2s that you kind of like opt into the same system. So that's where the, the zero knowledge proofs comes in. So you, you don't actually have to do that. Right, okay. Um... So, so, so yeah, the, the, the hardware requirements or like the requirements to run an L2 node would not increase uh, in like the optimal case of, okay, um, the zero knowledge proofs being there for the other L2s. So the, okay. the hardware requirements would be the same. Got it. So yeah, it, it it does actually scale the system. So because yeah, without zero knowledge, this would not actually scale the system because you have to run the nodes for all the others. But with zero knowledge proof, this this is actually scalable. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, my I last also... question. Sorry, Lisa, you go. Please ahead. go. Okay, okay. Uh, my question is, uh, if this is so good and it even uh solves the problem of uh bridge hacking. At least partially, that is a pretty huge problem. Uh, why? Why we still like like why still everyone doesn't do it? <laughs> uh, because well, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, uh, it needs some extra work, I guess. Uh, and I guess like yeah, people are still trying to figure out how to do this like efficiently. Uh, so yeah, you have like this bus mechanism. Um, but yeah. Are there different ways to do it? Uh, is it kind of like the best way? Like, yeah, some some like, like shared sequences come up with like different ways to do it that does not require this, but just needs like extra capital. Um, so yeah, I guess this is still like pretty new stuff, uh, I guess in general. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, uh, I'm not really sure how the how Optimism's uh, super chain works. The, the, the whole architecture and everything, but I was just wondering, like, uh, what are some some of the differences and uh, and similarities between what you presented here and how Optimism uh, looks at its super chain? Yeah, yeah, I think all these uh, all these chains will do something like very similar, unless somebody else finds like a better way to do it, and then everybody else will do the better thing because it doesn't make sense to do the the worst thing. Uh, so I think like all all twos will have like a a, a very similar system to to this one. Okay, cool. Thank you.